The government say they plan to set up a new community engagement forum to tackle the problem. But one group who won't be invited to participate is the independent advocacy group CAGE. In his speech, David Cameron attacked the National Union of Students for working with CAGE, who he says are extremists who support jihad in Iraq and Afghanistan and who called Jihadi John a beautiful young man. Uh, Kerry Bullivan joins us from CAGE. Good evening to you. Good evening. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for talking to us. Uh, it's a little noisy where you are, so I hope you can hear me OK. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Sorry. Uh, it's, I'm in London. It's quite busy. Sure. Um, first of all, when he talk, David Cameron talks about there being a poisonous extremist ideology, do you believe there is such a thing? Do, do, can you see that that exists? I think what David Cameron's doing and has been doing for a, for a long time is conflating um, conservative or orthodox Islam with uh, the so-called Islamism. Um, and that poses massive problems for the approach that he takes in counter-terrorism because there's no empirical evidence that links the two. Um, if you look to the uh, academics who have done research and studies on this, uh, people like Aaron Kunnani from uh, New York University, people like uh, David Miller from uh, Bath University, professor, um, people like even the ex-CIA um, uh, operative who was one of the architects of de-radicalization and these sorts of processes, um, uh, uh, pro uh, Professor Seeger. Um, what you see is that they all, even um, the, the ex-CIA operative, has said that they, this conveyor belt theory, this idea that um, uh, non-violence leads to violence, um, doesn't actually follow through. Um, and what the empirical evidence, and this comes from uh, the, the academic research, what the empirical evidence points to is that it's grievance that causes these problems. Um, it's uh, actual political issues, and that's why... Personally, we prefer to use the term political violence rather than terrorism, because terrorism is such a loaded phrase. But he's not using the phrase terrorism here. He's using the phrase poisonous ideology. Do you accept that online there are people spreading a poisonous version of Islam? I accept that online there are people trying to recruit people to come and join ISIS. Um, and ISIS, by the way, have about as much to do with Islam and uh, as much to do with a caliphate as the, uh, the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea have to do with democracy. Um, but the fact of the matter is that the legislation and the, the, the powers that Cameron's talking about bringing in are not about dealing with those people. It's not about dealing with ISIS. We've had glorification of terror laws for a number of years. We've got some of the strictest anti-terror laws in all of Europe, um, even the Western world. These powers are not about dealing with people who support terrorism. They're about dealing with uh, people who support, as he calls it, non-violent extremism. Um, I think it's very, very telling. Look to David Cameron's earlier speech. For too long, we have been tolerant of people who do not break the law. What the heck is this? We live in uh, a country where we're meant to have free speech. We're meant to have the right to disagree with the government if we want, to say that we think foreign policy is bad, and yet now that, has become a primary indicator of so-called extremism. Yeah, can we just um, be helpful to clear up your view of free speech? So, so when I see yeah. a, when I see a tweet from British rapper Abdul Majid Abdul Barry, uh, this is a photo of him holding a severed head on Twitter with the caption "Chilling with my homie" or what's left of him. Is that free speech for you, or should that be outlawed? Look, that's glorifying terror. Uh, it's already illegal uh, under uh, British law. And if they could bring the guy to justice, I'm sure they would. So when David Cameron uh, today speaks about greater powers to force internet providers to remove those kind of images, you support that, do you? Look, I'm as horrified by beheading as I am by barrel bomb. I'm as horrified by beheading as I am by the CIA torture programme. So you would and welcome... I, I, can I just clarify your point of view with this? Yeah. I, think, I think we might have some common ground between cool. you and the Prime Minister. You would welcome internet service providers being forced to remove those images, would you? I, I would hope that they shouldn't need to be forced to remove uh, horrific images like that. They should be doing it off their own back. Um, but look, this is about looking at the actual causes of um, uh, political violence and working towards getting to an actual solution. The problem is David Cameron's approach ignores even what the, the current head of the CIA, Paul Bremner, um, said when he, uh, he said that one of the main factors for uh, the current, and he used the term terrorism, uh, I'll use political violence,
violence, one of the main factors is our foreign policy, is, is our war. Where does ISIS come from? Yes, yeah, sorry, I, sorry, go on. I was, I thought you were going to carry on. Okay, sorry. I, I assumed it was a rhetorical question. Well, I, I uh, maybe it was. Um, uh, this comes from the fact that uh, we went into a, a war in Iraq that was an illegal war um, for for a regime change. Um, that a million people in the UK ca uh, marched against the largest demonstration we've ever had in the UK, and what what we did is we we took the Baathists out of. Um, uh, power, which they weren't good people, I'm not defending them in the slightest, but then we put a bunch of artists who were uh, adept at using torture and put them in Abu Ghraib, where they were tortured, with a bunch of people who were Sunni tribesmen, um, very religious, who had been disenfranchised by the new uh, government that we had installed, and we created a perfect storm. The, all of the networks, and this is Again, very, very uh, clear to see, all of the networks that were formed amongst the leadership crisis came from these prisons where they were witnessing uh, our, our troops uh, committing the same sort of torture. So can, I just, you, can I just ask you, can I just go on one more before we run out of time? He also talks in this speech about integration uh, and some of the yeah. things, some of the historical events that you listed there that you feel uh, have led to a political disenfranchisement. How, uh, yeah. how would you help to integrate people of differing political views so that they can disagree without wanting to uh, affect violence against the other? Well, this is where we call for um, a, a very open and frank debate, which is not what, the, what David Cameron's calling for. He's calling for legislation to silence people who he feels are extreme and he doesn't like their views. Um, we think you need to do quite the opposite. If we're confident and we're, we're solid in our, in our position, if we believe in, in our values uh, as much as David Cameron says, then we need to have debates with the people that we dislike. We need to bring it out into the open and then the, the battle of ideas and the, 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 the marketplace of ideas will be the thing that wins out. Thank you for talking to us tonight. Kerry Bullivant from CAGE. Uh, one group that has already been consulted is the Quilliam Foundation, who've been working with the government to reduce Islamist extremism. Jonathan Russell joins us from the Quilliam Foundation. Uh, has that, that alignment to the government, the fact that you are working with the government already, has that raised question marks about your credibility in some Muslim communities? Uh, well, I don't think it. I don't think it should, uh, because but has it? in 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 all in all policy areas, uh, it, it makes sense. I, I'd have thought for the for the government to consult with experts and those who have experience in these matters. Now, of course, this is a sensitive area, and and when there is a coordinated, uh, what I call preventing prevent lobby, a coordinated attempt to smear all efforts to to pursue progressive counter extremism as. As government stooge operatives, I, you know, you should see my Twitter mentions. I'm, I'm called all sorts of things as, as an MI6 uh, stooge and all sorts of things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd say that, um, that, that yes, it is, it is potentially problematic. However, I think it's worth pursuing with um, because, uh, you know, just listening to, to your, your earlier guest there, I think there, there's a lot, um, a lot we can take from that, but uh, an awful lot to be concerned with too. Mm. Do you think it's a shame, though, that the government has said that a group like Cage won't be involved? Because ultimately, you need all views, don't you, before you can move forward? Uh, what, 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 what I think the, the crucial thing to do here is, is to make a, a difference between uh, engagement and partnership. Uh, I'm all for engagement with, with as broad a range of people as possible. I don't think at any point we should consider someone beyond the pale. If you look at my colleagues... Um, three of my colleagues, uh, Majid Nawaz is probably the most famous, but also Dr. Osama Hassan, both of them former extremists. Now, when, when they started to question their, their former views, their former adherence to, to a poisonous ideology that, that uh, the Prime Minister talks about, um, we, we in, uh, they, they were engaged with and, uh, and turned their back on those, on those views. And it showed that, that people can change. So I'm all for engagement, um, don't get me wrong. In terms of partnership, though, I think if public funds are going to an organisation uh, or if, if organisations are bestowed a certain legitimacy to carry out government policy, then I think we can expect a higher threshold for that engagement. Now, that threshold is not uh, a legal versus illegal uh, threshold. Uh, much of what CAGE does, for example, is, is, is entirely within the realms of legality. However, 
for me uh, uh, and, and what I'm um, proposing to the government is that they have a, a human rights standard for, for this kind of partnership. Uh, and if people cannot subscribe to universal human rights, like equality before the law, uh, like freedom from discrimination, and, and that's, that's equality for, for men and women, for, for gay people and straight people, for, for Muslims and non-Muslims, then, then quite frankly, I don't think uh, it's fair to spend taxpayers' money on, on partnering with them. So, so yes, by all means, let's, let's have a conversation. But, but perhaps we should look beyond these traditional community leader types and look to, to women, to young people, to minorities within minorities who, who have got a voice that has so far not been heard. Thank you very much for talking to us tonight. Jonathan Russell from the Quilliam Foundation.